Today, films are used for entertainment, education, and research. Whatever a film's purpose, it should always be given smooth, professional projection. Careful planning and preparation are essential to achieving the professional projection, which will help the audience get the most out of the films it sees. To show films, there are a number of motion picture projectors available. There are minor differences in them, such as the procedure for threading the film, replacing the projector lamp, cleaning the film gate, the location of the speaker, and the method of rewinding. However, all motion picture projectors operate on the same basic principles. A clear understanding of these principles will provide a basis for operating any type of 16 millimeter projector. A typical motion picture projector consists of two sections, each with a different function. The picture section, which projects the picture from the film to the screen, and the sound section, which reproduces or recreates the sounds which have been recorded on the film sound track. As the film moves through the projector, it first enters the picture section. In this section is the projection lamp which is a very bright light source. This light is concentrated on a single frame of the film by a condenser lens. The brilliantly illuminated frame of the film is then projected by the projection lens onto the screen. The lens is moved to focus the picture. As the film moves through the picture section, it stops momentarily on each frame. In a sound projector, this happens 24 times a second. Next, the film enters the sound section. Here, an exciter lamp passes light through the soundtrack area of the film. This light is received by the photocell. Sound waves, which have been recorded as variations of light and dark areas on this film, cause the light beam reaching the photocell to vary in brightness. This makes the photocell produce electrical pulsations, which are then amplified and fed to the speaker. In contrast to the picture section, the film in the sound section must move smoothly and at a constant speed. There are two basic types of film strip projectors, manual advance and automatic advance. With the manual advance machines, the operator must advance the film manually, according to audible signals on the accompanying record or tape, if there is one. In automatic machines, 
the film is advanced by inaudible signals on the record or tape. Whether a film strip or a motion picture projector is to be used, preparation in advance is the key to good projection. In the majority of institutions, audiovisual equipment and the films themselves are kept in a central location. Here, the films are checked and, if necessary, repaired, and the equipment is maintained. Operators should be trained in the principles of projection and in maintenance of the equipment. When a window is dirty, only a blurred image is seen. A cloth with a window cleaner is used to give a crystal view. Just so in cleaning the lenses of a projector. Remove grit and brush gently with a soft brush. Use a piece of lens cleaning tissue with a drop of lens cleaner on it. Then clean lightly using a circular motion. A dirty lens projects a scene like this. Clean it and you have this. This fuzz around the edge of the picture area is dirt in the aperture. It is not only disturbing to see, but it can scratch the film. Though projectors are built to keep film wear and strain at a minimum, film running through a projector must touch hard surfaces in a few places. Any dirt grit or caked emulsion in these places such as the film gate, the sprockets which engage the sprocket holes and move the film, and the guide rollers can cause these harmful and unpleasant scratches. These areas should be cleaned before every film showing. Periodically the film gate edges will have to be cleaned with a wooden toothpick, not a metal object, to remove caked emulsion. When the parts which contact the film are worn unevenly or are dented, scratching will result. Close inspection of the film gate will show that it is designed so that important parts of the film will not touch it at all. A path is hollowed for the picture area and another path is hollowed for the soundtrack. Only the small remaining parts of the film touch the gate. Dragging the leader on the floor picks up dirt and dust. Hasty threading can also lead to film damage. The most common fault in quick threading is not having the sprocket teeth engaged in the sprocket holes. If sprocket holes are torn, the sprockets and the claws of the film gate may fail to transport the film, resulting in the loss of the loops. Since the loops act as shock absorbers, their loss means the film is receiving damaging strain. To correct this, the projector should be stopped immediately and the loops restored. If this isn't caught at once, many feet of film may be destroyed. It's very much like having several pages torn or ripped out of a book. Correct loop size is usually indicated on the projector. If the loops are too large, they will slap about. If they are too short, they may tear the film. When a film break occurs in the projector, serious film damage may result. The film must fit snugly over the sound drum, and the lower loop must always be the correct size in order for the sound to be synchronized with the picture. The sound is located ahead of the corresponding picture because of the distance between the sound section and the picture section of the projector. Properly threaded film appears like this on the screen. I don't know what to do about it. Is there something I can do to stop the thing from smoking? Because I'm sure it's going to catch on fire and blow up any second. However, if the lower loop is too short, the voice will be heard like this. Smoking like crazy. Is there anything I can do? Anything at all? In advance of the picture. And if the loop is too long, the voice may well lag behind the corresponding picture. Look, I, took the, I stepped on the brake and the thing started to smoke. Everything just blew up in front of me, so I stopped. I didn't, I don't know. Some motion picture projectors are designed to thread the film through the machine automatically and form the loops to the correct size. It is still important, however, with such machines 
to read their instructions carefully and to check to see that the automatic threading devices have performed properly. Films to be used in auto-thread projectors should be supplied with long leaders in case of a malfunction. If the film should break while being projected, do not patch it with tape or anything else. Simply overlap and continue winding so that later on the break will be found and repaired. Not only is understanding the technical operation and maintenance of equipment important, but knowledge of proper projection setups covering varied situations is equally necessary. The screen should be set up at the front of the room so that everyone can easily see it. The screen should be placed at least two screen widths in front of the first row. Then the bottom of the screen should be level with the tops of the heads of those in the front row. Normally, the screen should be placed at the front and center of the class, but if the room is difficult to darken, and if the chairs can be moved, it is better to place the screen diagonally in the corner of the room by the windows. In a room where light control is difficult, a screen specially surfaced for use in lighted areas is most helpful. To ensure a smooth running operation, a supply of extra projection lamps and exciter lamps should be on hand. With most of the preliminary preparation done in the audiovisual or equipment room, the final setup in the classroom can be made. This time, the projectionist is able to set up the equipment before the class assembles. Sometimes the setup must be made while the class is in session. The screen is placed directly in front of the projector and adjusted to the proper height. The power cord is taped to the floor to prevent the projector from being tipped over if the cord is accidentally pulled. If an extension cord is used, it should be taped to the floor also. For the best sound, the speaker, unless it is built in, should be placed off the floor and near the screen. The speaker cord is secured in the same manner as the power cord. When the amplifier is turned on and the volume is raised, a hiss will be heard in the speaker, indicating that the sound system is working. It's always a good idea to check the film by placing the reel on the projector. If the film is mounted on the reel properly, it should come off the reel in a clockwise direction. When held in this position, the title should read correctly. If there is a soundtrack, it will be on the inside edge of the film. When the projector is started, you won't have this. The picture will be right side up and in proper position. It's always a good practice, if time permits, to actually view the beginning of the film in order to check the focus, the framing, and the volume of the sound. When the room is filled with people, the volume may have to be turned higher. This preparation is the key to good projection. It will result in a smooth, professional screening of the film, and this, in turn, will provide an opportunity for maximum audience benefit.